When that explosion occurred, my dream evaporated. I knew that there'd be no landing on, of 13 on the moon, regardless of what the situation, even before I knew what was happening. I knew that there was, there was and uh, it was only after I came back and landed uh, safely that I was disappointed that the situation occurred that I never could land on the moon. The explosion occurred at just the only place that it could have happened that would re result in a successful recovery. If it happened any time after we got in lunar orbit or when we were on the surface, uh, we'd never have the fuel to get either back up to rendezvous with the command module or even to get uncaptured by the moon. Well, we all came to the conclusion that the only way we were going to get home was to use the lunar module as a lifeboat and what it has and does it have enough oxygen and things like that. Well, the lunar module was not a device you want to spend a lot of time in. Uh, it's, it was designed for two people for two days. And of course, we had Swiker that came, came in too, so there's three people that were there as we've determined now for at least four days to get home. Uh, and so it was, it was kind of cramped. And of course, the first thing we had to do was uh, power down everything. So uh, to save electrical power. But the main thing that we had to worry about, we found out, was uh, the carbon dioxide in the lunar module. It took a bit of innovation and uh, in thinking uh, to make that difference. And uh, we did it. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm really happy that the crew got the information and we could actually make it so that we wouldn't uh, pass out by starting to breathe carbon dioxide. As we got towards the Earth and we're getting ready to take care of everything, we managed to get electrical power back into the command modules uh, a battery, so have enough power there to have the command module alone to the, for the descent.